Entonces comenzamos con las pruebas de convergencia, la prueba de, de los términos. Here we'll introduce the turn test for the divergence of a series. Here's a typical geometric series. For an infinite geometric series with a ratio between terms is less than one, the series converges to A over 1 minus R, where A is the first term and R is the ratio. So for this series, that's a half, or 0.5, over 1 minus 0.5. So that's 0.5 over 0.5, which is 1. Great, so this series converges to 1. Here's a question about this series, though. If you look at the individual terms in the series, what value do they approach? The terms are a half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and so on. So what value are these individual terms approaching? La pregunta es, ¿a cuál valor converge? Tenemos la fórmula y nos dice la sumatoria de n de, de n igual a 1 infinito de 1 entre 2 a la n, ¿a cuánto converge? 0, 1 medio, 1 o infinito. So for this question, we're interested in the limit of the individual terms, not their sum. So if we look at the individual terms, we have a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth. The next would be 1 over 32, and 1 over 64. And after a while, 1 over 1,024. And after a longer while, 1 over 2 to the hundredth power. These individual terms are getting smaller and smaller. They're getting half each time. So their limit is zero. Recuerden que aunque el exponente es grande, es el inverso. Entonces, en lugar de ser grande, se hace chiquito, chiquito, chiquito. Tiende a ser más pequeño el número. Right, they're approaching no. zero. The terms are 1 over 2 to the n. And the limit is n goes to infinity, meaning we're looking at the nth term as n gets really, really big. This limit goes to zero. Now suppose we had some other series, the sum of the terms a n, and we know that the limit of the terms in this series, as n gets very large, approaches one. Can you figure out if this series converges or diverges just from this information? A ver, ahora tenemos una serie de a números, para ver, en unos a sub n. Esa serie, si me llevan a hacer el límite de esa, de esa sumatoria, es igual a 1. Con esa información, ¿qué puedo decir de la sumatoria? ¿Converge a 1? ¿Diverge? ¿No converge? ¿Me diverge? ¿O converge? Pero no podemos conocer el valor. Pero es una medio contradictoria. Habíamos hecho que una serie convergente es aquella cuya sumatoria tiende a un valor definido. Entonces la última parecería parece, parece que no es. Ya que no es. Nos dejan con tres opciones. Converge a uno, es divergente, o no converge ni nivel. La segunda es divergente. Vamos a ver por qué. Ok, let's look at this series. 
where the individual returns the approach a value of 1. It will be A1 plus A2 plus A3 and so on. But eventually all the terms will start looking like 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. So even if the first few terms, even if the first hundred or thousand terms adds up to some number, that will get overshadowed by the fact that you have infinitely many ones eventually. So this series will add up to infinity or diverge. Right. Without even knowing anything else about the series, know that it has to diverge. Why? Because this limit means that eventually all the terms will be very close to 1. And if we keep adding up 1s, the sum will diverge, going off to infinity. In fact, if the limit of the terms is anything except 0, it will be impossible for the sum to converge. That's the basis of the term test. Let's write it down. Suppose we have a series, say, A1 plus A2 plus A3, etc. If the limit of terms is anything but zero, including undefined, then the series always diverges. If the limit of the terms is zero, then the series can converge, like the geometric series we looked at at the beginning, or it could also diverge. The term test is really a divergence test, because we can never use this test to make sure a series converges. To really know if something converges, we'll need to use other tests. Nos puede confirmar si una serie es divergente siempre que la de límite sea distinto de cero. Si el límite es igual a cero, no, no nos dice que es. Tenemos que usar otro tipo de pruebas que veremos a continuación, como la prueba de comparación de series. Prueba de comparación. En este tutorial, we'll introduce the comparison test which can help you determine if the series converges or diverges. Let's say the heights of these bars represent an infinite series of Bs, so B1, B2, B3, and so on. If you add up all the areas of the bars, you'll get the sum of this series. Now here are the terms of another infinite series, A's. If A1 is less than B1, A2 is less than B2, A3 is less than B3, and so on. Let's say that all the A's are less than the corresponding B. Now suppose I tell you that the sum of the b's converges. What can you say about the sum of the a's? Bien, tenemos ahí dos series, la serie del número a y la serie del número b. Eh, lo, la serie de b es mayor que la serie de a. Si la serie de b es convergente, ¿cómo será la serie de b? Convergente, divergente o cualquiera de las dos si esta serie es convergente porque su sumatoria da, llega a un valor definido cualquiera que este sea y hay una proporción en la serie de A esta la serie de B ¿cómo será la sumatoria de la serie de A. ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? ¿Divergente? A ver, ¿quién vota por convergente? ¿Quién vota por divergente? ¿Alguien dijo convergente? Sí. Y es convergente. Ok. So we're saying that the sum of all the B's converges. Let's say you add up all the B's from 1 to infinity. B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, all the way up to as many B's as there are. Let's say it adds up to 17,000, some number. What do the A's have to add up to? Well, if you add up all these A's, they're always less than the B's. So the sum of the A's has to be less than 17,000. So if the sum of the B's converges, the sum of the A's also has to converge. But not only that, it has to converge to a number that's less than whatever the sum of the B's converge to. Converge a un número específico pero menor que el de la otra serie. Right. The sum or area of the A's is less than the sum of the B's. So the sum of the A's also has to converge. And the A's have to converge to a value less than the B's. And if I instead tell you that the sum of the A's diverges, then what can you tell me about the sum of the B's? Ahora, tenemos dos A's, una de números mayores, 
si la serie en un órgano es el divergente, esto se verá por la serie de los valores. Será convergente, divergente o ni una ni otra, o una o la otra. ¿Cuál? ¿Convergente? Ah, divergente. No, si es divergente, vamos a ver. This time around, we're saying that the Sony A's goes to infinity. So if you add up the areas of all these bars here, this goes to infinity. But the B's are even bigger than the A's. Every B term is bigger than its corresponding A term. So if the smaller A's go to infinity, then you bet that the sum of the B's also goes to infinity. Exactly. If the smaller series diverges, And the bigger series must diverge as well, since the area taken up by the B's is greater than the area taken up by the A's. If the sum of the A's goes to infinity, then the sum of the B's goes to infinity as well. Let's try using this comparison test on an example. Here's the series 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, plus 1 over 5 factorial, and so on. Does this series converge or diverge? To find out, we're going to compare it to this series over here. 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 2 over 4, and so on, adding up 1 over all the powers of 2. First off, does this series down here converge or diverge? A ver, estamos comparando cosas. Estamos comparando cosas. Entonces, ¿cuál es la y otra donde es potencial. ¿Se ¿Sí recuerdan lo que son los números factoriales? Los factoriales del número. Es eh, el número que es igual a la multiplicación de este número por el El factorial de 1 sería, o uno factorial sería 1. O sería 1 entre 1. Más 1 entre, no es factorial, sería 2 por 1. Más, ¿este cuál sería? 6. 3 por 2, 6 por 1, 6. Más, 1 entre 6 por 4 por 6, sería 5. Más, y abajo tenemos una serie de números racionales donde el denominador son potenciales. Pues sería aquí 1 entre 1, 1 lado. Medio, sería más 1 entre 2 al cuadrado es 4 por 3, 12. 4 por 3, 12 por 2, 24. Por 1, 24. Si entras el 4 factorial es 24. El 5 factorial sería 24 por 5, son 126. 120. Okay. Sería entonces un cuarto más un octavo, o sea, este, 2 por 2, 4 por 2, 8, más un divisado, más, ok. Bien. ¿Qué podemos decir de la serie potencial? ¿Es convergente, es divergente o no es ni convergente ni divergente? ¿Es convergente? Vamos a ver por qué. For this bottom series, let's ignore the one at the beginning. Let's look at everything else first. We have one plus a half plus one over two squared plus one over two cubed plus one over two four. This is a geometric series because each term is one and a half the previous term. So r equals one half of this geometric series. And geometric series always converge when r is less than one. So this geometric series converges. And if we add one to it, it still converges. Además, nos comparó porque la serie de abajo es una serie geométrica. Y las series geométricas son convergentes. Entonces, al comparar la otra que es proporcional, sería entonces también convergente. Right, it converges. If you ignore this one over here, the rest of it is a geometric series, which converges. So this geometric series here converges to a certain number. And if you add one to this series, 
it will converge to that same number, but plus one. The point is, this series converges. Now we can use the comparison test that all the terms of one series is greater than all the terms of the other series. Is that the case here? Entonces, ¿cuál es? La segunda opción. Excellent. Yes. Every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in the top series. So now we know that the bottom series converges, and that every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in the top series. So what can you say about the top series? Bien. ¿Qué podemos decir de la serie superior? ¿Es convergente? Ok, bottom series converges. Bottom series has the bigger terms. The top series has the smaller terms. So if these bigger terms add up to a certain number, that means the smaller terms had better also add up to an even smaller number. They can't go up to infinity. So this top series converges. Si la sumamos, nos da al final un número específico menor que el de la serie de abajo. Right. As you found earlier, if a series, like the blue one here, converges, and if all the terms of another series are smaller, like they are from the orange series here, then that smaller series also has to converge. So this series on top has to converge as well. Can you figure out what the sum of this bottom series is? ¿Cuál sería la suma de la serie inferior? ¿Cuál sería ese número? Al cual, en el cual converge la serie potencial. Las fracciones potenciales. ¿Cuánto es? ¿Recuerdan la fórmula? ¿No? ¿Puntado? Para eso es la memoria extrasomática, para recordar. O sea, la escritura. Vamos a ver. For this series on the bottom, we have a 1, and then we have a geometric series. 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, and so on. So the sum of an infinite geometric series is the first term, A, over 1 minus the ratio of the terms, which is R. So the first term here is 1, and then R is a half. 
So 1 over 1 minus a half, this is equal to 2. So this expression here is 2, and we're adding 1 to it. So 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay. Tenemos la fórmula de la serie hipotética. El primer término, 1 menos la proporción, que es un medio para esta serie. Y esto nos da igual a 2. Queda 1 entre 1 medio es igual a 2. Más el término, inicia que 1, tiende a 3. Right, let's do it. Since each term in the top series is smaller than each term in the bottom series, this top series has to add up to a value that's less than 3. The sum of this top series turns out to be about 2.718. And if you add up the infinitely many terms here, this sum turns out to be E, or Euler's number. So congrats, you just proved that the number E, by this definition, converges to a number less than 3. Okay, last question. Let's switch things up a little bit. Suppose the larger series, shown in blue here, diverges. What can you say about the smaller series? Bien, ahora, pongamos en caso una serie de dos series, una de las cuales es mayor que la otra y esa es divergente. ¿Cómo será la serie de los números menores? ¿Convergente, divergente o puede ser cualquier lado? Sí. Convergente. <laughs> Vamos a ver por qué. So now we know that the B's, the bigger series, diverges. What can we say about the smaller series? Well, let's look at some examples. Let's say that each term AN is one half of BN. So the A's are all smaller than the B's. They're half of the B's. But if you add up all the B's and they sum up to infinity, and the A's will add up to half of infinity, which is still infinity. So the A's could very well diverge. But if you make the A's really small, a lot smaller than the B's, you could come up with an example where the A's converge. So you really have no idea if this sum of the A's converges or diverges, because it's the smaller series. So it's this choice here. Si, si los números si de la serie inferior son mucho más pequeños que la serie superior, podría converger a cero. Entonces no podemos saber. Podría diverger, pero también podría converger. Right. You need more information. And if you know that the smaller series converges, then you can't say whether the larger series converges or diverges. You have a series and you want to use another series to compare it to using the comparison test. Pick that other series carefully. Otherwise, you'll end up in a case like this with not enough information. Bien. Afortunadamente hay otras pruebas para definir las series numéricas. Let's take a look at what's called the harmonic series. The harmonic series can be written like this in sigma notation. It's 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 and so on. In this tutorial, we'll try to figure out whether the harmonic series converges or diverges. We'll figure this out using the comparison test. Let's compare the harmonic series to another series, which we'll write here in blue. This other series will be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 2 terms of the 1 over 4 plus 4 terms of the 1 over 8 plus 8 terms of the 1 over 16, and so on. For this blue series, what will be the next group of terms after these 1 over 16 terms? Bien, tenemos entonces ahí una serie armónica. 1 más 1 medio más 1 tercio más 1 cuarto más 1 quinto más 1 sexto más 1 sexto más 1 quinto octavo. Bien. Y tenemos otra serie. ¿Cuál es el siguiente grupo de términos? Después de que tenemos un término de 1 entre 1, un término de medio. Son cuántos? 16 términos de 
1 entre 32. Okay. Bien. Ok, now it's time to compare these two series. They have the same first term, 1 over 1, and they have the same second term, 1 over 2. Now, if you look at the third and fourth terms, which series is bigger, the top or the bottom? What series is mayor? En ese pack de términos. ¿Y la de arriba? Es más grande un tercio más un cuarto que un cuarto más un cuarto. Si hacemos el ejercicio de los pasteles, vamos a ver que efectivamente es más grande un tercio que un cuarto. Entonces, al sumarlo a un cuarto, nos da más grande que si tenemos nada más dos cuartitos. Right. The third plus the fourth is bigger than the fourth plus the fourth. And now let's look at the next four terms, which are the four one-eighths down here. Which set of four terms has the bigger sum? Ahora comparamos los siguientes cuatro términos de las dos series. ¿Cuál segmento de serie es mayor? Otra vez el de arriba. Once again, the top series is bigger. Finally, let's look at the 1 16th terms. Which series is bigger when you add up these terms? Y para los siguientes ocho términos, la naranjada o la azul? Mayor. Mayor, la naranjada. Right. Once again, the harmonic series is the bigger series. It turns out that for every term in both series, the harmonic series is equal or bigger than its corresponding term in the series on the bottom. So let's label the harmonic series as being the bigger series. And this series that we wrote at the bottom is the smaller series. Next, let's find out if this bottom series converges or diverges. We can combine the two one-fourth terms to make a half. We can also combine the four one-eighth terms to make another half. And if you add up all the one-sixteenth terms in this series, what do you get? Entonces, ¿qué sería si juntamos los ocho términos de un 16 O otro medio. Exactly. That's another half. And if you add up all the 1 over 32, 1 over 64, and 1 over 128 terms, each of those adds up to another half. So in this bottom series, there are infinitely many halves that we're adding up. So would you say that this series on the bottom converges or diverges? Ah, uh, esa serie entonces es convergente, divergente, o podría ser a veces convergente y a veces divergente. Divergente. Mm -hmm. If you look at these terms here, they're adding up infinitely many halves. So this series definitely diverges. Now, on top of that, you're adding one to it. It doesn't really affect anything. It still diverges. Porque es divergente. Aquí tenemos un uno. Contamos dos de estos, tenemos un uno. Más cada par sería un uno. Entonces sería una sumatoria de uno, 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 uno más infinito, inverso más infinito. Es divergente. ¿Qué le voy a hacer aquí? Right, it diverges. If you add up infinitely many halves, the sum goes to infinity. This series, as it's currently written, also fails the term test. In order for a series to converge, the individual terms have to go to zero, and these just stay at a half. Okay, so this smaller series diverges. What does that tell you about the bigger harmonic series? ¿Qué sucede con la serie armónica? ¿Es convergente, divergente, o a veces convergente y a veces divergente? ¿Cómo sería? ¿Cuál? ¿La segunda o la tercera? So if the smaller series diverges and the harmonic series is even bigger, it also has to go to infinity or diverge. Right. If the smaller series diverges, then the bigger series has to diverge as well. Great. So you've just proven that the harmonic series diverges. So las series armónicas también son divergentes. Vamos a ver ahora series de p. 
que ya las vimos un poco las series de P a su momento pero a ver this tutorial we'll talk about what are called P series and whether they converge or diverge a P series is a sum that looks like this it's the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the P power as you change this exponent P sometimes the series will converge and other times it will diverge let's see an example when P equals 1 it's the harmonic series. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which you can also write as 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5, and so on. Does the harmonic series converge or diverge? La serie harmónica no es como los tres. Right, it diverges. Now let's look at another P series where the power is a half. So that's 1 over root 1 plus 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 3 plus 1 over root 4 plus 1 over root 5 and so on. Let's figure out if this series converges or diverges. To do that, let's compare these two series here. Which series has the larger terms? Aquí la potencia, aquí también está grabando n a una potencia, en este caso una potencia racional, un f, que es igual a la raíz cuadrada del número. ¿Cuál serie tiene los términos mayores? La de arriba o la de abajo. La serie armónica siempre tiene términos mayores que la de abajo, o la serie, la serie de potencia de p, la serie de potencia de p potencia racional tiene términos mayores o algunos son mayores en una y otros mayores en la otra aquí como es es uno y de uno más uno entre la raíz de dos la raíz cuadrada de dos ¿cuánto es? ¿cuánto es? Exactly. The bottom series has the larger terms. 1 over root 1 is 1, which is the same as 1 over 1. But all the other terms are bigger in the bottom series. 1 over root 2 is bigger than 1 over 2. 1 over root 3 is bigger than 1 over 3, and so on. So the terms in the bottom series are bigger than those in the top. And if the top series diverges, what does that mean about this series on the bottom? Si la serie armónica es divergente, ¿qué sucede con la serie de P? ¿Es convergente? ¿Es divergente? If the smaller series diverges, meaning that sum goes to infinity, then the bigger series has to diverge as well. Yes, it diverges as well. We saw that when p was a half, the series diverges. It turns out that p series diverge for all values of p less than or equal to 1. When p equals 1, you get the harmonic series, which we said diverges. Next, let's look at when p is larger than 1. Let's look specifically at when p equals 2. So that's 1 over 1 squared, plus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, and so on. Which of these two series has the bigger terms? Well, ahora tenemos, cambiamos la potencia, de una potencia racional a una potencia en unos enteros. ¿Cuál de las dos tiene los, los, eh, 
términos más mayores la serie eh, armónica o la serie de potencia donde la potencia de P es mayor que 1 ¿cuál? la serie de, de P la armónica muy bien yes the squares are the smaller terms so if you know that the harmonic series diverges and that the squares here are the smaller terms what can you say about this series down here si la serie de la armónica es divergente, ¿cómo es ahora la serie de esa serie de P? La serie de potencia. Es convergente, divergente, pero la prueba de comparación no es concluyente. ¿No es concluyente? Correcto. Es lo que hemos Exactly right. You can't say whether it converges or diverges. So let's try comparing this to another series. Here's our series of squares. And the series we'll compare it to starts with 1 over 1 squared, and then two terms that are 1 over 2 squared, followed by four terms that are 1 over 4 squared, and then eight terms that are 1 over 8 squared, 16 terms that are 1 over 16 squared, and so on. Which series has the larger terms here? Vamos a compararla con esa serie que está ahí. ¿Cuál de las dos series tiene los términos mayores? La, la azul o la naranjana? La naranjana, los términos son mayores. Si sí está, ¿sí? tendríamos que obtener aquí, aquí sería un cuarto, acá sería un cuarto. Estos son iguales, pero este es un cuarto y este sería un noveno. Es un cuarto, es más grande que un noveno. Right. The bottom series has bigger terms. Their first terms are equal. But 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 squared is bigger than 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared. And if you look at the next four terms, the bottom series has a bigger sum. And the same goes for all the other terms. So the sum of the bottom series is bigger than the sum of the top series. Now let's combine the two 1 over 2 squared terms. Adding 1 over 2 squared and another 1 over 2 squared gives us 2 over 2 squared. And we can combine the 4 1 over 4 squared terms to get 4 over 4 squared. If we keep combining more groups of terms in the series, we get 8 over 8 squared, 16 over 16 squared, 32 over 32 squared, and so on, with higher powers of 2. We can cancel out these numerators with the square and the denominators. So this bottom series is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16, and so on. This is a geometric series. What's its sum? Why does it not say geometric? You put in the formula the summatorium of the series geometric. The first term. ¿Cuánto la suma? ¿Cuánto es? ¿Cuánto es? ¿Cuánto es? El primer término es este, es uno. Uno. ¿Y entonces cuánto es? Tres. No, porque en la otra teníamos un 1 antes. <risa> o sea, si es casi igual a la otra, menos 1, si la otra nos dio más, si nos dio 3, esta debe ser 3 menos 1, 2. Yeah, this geometric series adds up to 2. And if it adds up to a finite number, that's what it means to say that the series converges. So if the series with the bigger terms converges, what can you say about this series up here with the smaller terms? Si la serie de abajo es convergente, ¿qué pasa con la serie que es menor? Es convergente a valores menores, no a valores menores. 
2, es convertir en un valor mayor de 2, es divergente o la prueba de comparación no es concluida. ¿Es divergente? No. Es convergente a un valor menor que 2. Porque es proporcional, es proporcional a esta, pero es menor. Entonces debe darnos una suma menor a 2. Exactly. This series converges, and it has to converge to a number less than 2. If you add up all these terms, which are 1 divided by the squares, it adds up to about 1.6449. And if you add up the infinitely many terms in this series, it turns out to add up to exactly pi squared over 6. So this p series, for which the exponent p is 2, converges. We know that the harmonic series diverges. It turns out that the harmonic series is the border between when a p-series converges or diverges. We found that p-series diverge when p is less than or equal to 1. But p-series converge for every p greater than 1. You showed it converges when p equals 2. But even when p equals 1.0000000001, this series will still converge. Entonces, las series de potencia son divergentes y la potencia es menor que 1 que son convergentes y la potencia es menor que 1 se hace la conclusión vamos a ver ahora otra prueba que es la prueba de proporciones aquí vamos a introducir uno de los más útiles de convergencia que se llama el ratio de la primera vamos a ver un ejemplo la serie n squared por 3 a la n from n equals 1 to infinity. What's the first term in this series? Bien. Te vamos a ver la sumatoria desde n igual a 1 hasta infinito de n al cuadrado entre 3 a la n. ¿Cuál sería el primer término en esa serie? 0, 1, 1 tercio o 1 noveno. El primer término sería donde n es igual a 1. Si n es igual a 1, el primer término es un tercio. N es igual a 1 al cuadrado que da 1, 3 a la 1 es 3, un tercio. Right. The first term is a third. Then 4 over 9, 9 over 27, 16 over 81, 25 over 243, and so on. The numerators are all the squares, and the denominators are powers of 3, which seem to get bigger even faster than the squares do. So one way to find out if this series converges is to perform a comparison test where we compare this series to another series. Let's compare it to this series here, 4 over 2 to the n. Which of these two series has the bigger terms? Bien, para saber si la serie es convergente o divergente, comparemosla con la serie de esta. Es que lo normal que es la sumatoria es de n igual a 1 de 4 de 2 a la n. Um, ¿Cuál de las dos series tiene los números mayores? ¿La marcada? ¿La azul? ¿O algunos son mayores en una y otros son mayores en la otra? Un tercio como respecto a cuatro medios, cuatro menos como respecto a cuatro cuartos, nueve vigésimos séptimos como respecto a cuatro octavos. Los de abajo son más grandes. Se refieren a más grandes o iguales. Esta opción sería válida si fueran algunos mayores y otros menores. Pues si son mayores o tal vez iguales, entonces sería esta. Si fueran menores o tal vez iguales, sería esta. En este caso se que estas dos, este es mayor que este, este es mayor que este, porque este es un entero. 4 novenos, este menos que medio. Esto es un tercio y esto es un medio. Es un medio para la tercio, etc. Esta es la segunda opción. Yes, every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in our original series up here. Now, does this series down here converge or diverge? Bien. Ahora, la serie de abajo es convergente o divergente. ¿Cómo? 
convergente? Es convergente. Vamos a ver por qué. Let's look at this series a little more carefully. No, si es convergente significa un número específico. Es una serie infinita, pero converge a un valor específico la suma. Its first term is two, and has a ratio r dos más uno más uno más which is less than one. So this geometric series here converges. Si al hecho de que tengamos dos más uno ya nos da un tres, igual va a a quedar cercana a tres. Entonces tiende a ser igual a tres a un número específico por tanto convergente. Si estos términos no estuvieran, entonces probablemente sería divergente, porque tendría un número muy pequeño. Exacto. It converges because it's a geometric series. This series happens to converge to four. Anyway, because the bigger series converges, that means the smaller series must converge as well. Great. So we've used the comparison test to show that our series converges. But sometimes it's not easy to find a good series to compare to. Finding this series here took some careful checking. Most of the time, instead of doing the comparison test, there's another convergence test you can use instead, called the ratio test, which we'll introduce now. For this test, we'll be taking the ratio of neighboring terms in the series. We'll be looking specifically at the n plus 1 term of the series, divided by the nth term. For example, The second term divided by the first term is 4 ninths over 1 third, which is approximately 1.333. The second term is bigger than the first. Let's find the ratio of two later terms in the series. 25 over 243 over 16 over 81. Their ratio is about 0.52, so the fifth term is smaller than the fourth. For the ratio test, we want to look at the limit of this ratio between neighboring terms as n goes to infinity. In other words, if we look at a term in the series that's really, really far down in the series, how much smaller is the next term in the series? Try plugging in a really large value of n to see if you can figure out what this limit is. Ok. La prueba de proporción que nos significa que debemos comparar pares de términos y ver la proporción de diferencia entre ese par. En este caso vemos que conforme eh, los términos son mayores la comparación o la, la proporción se hace más pequeña la primera la proporción entre el primer par era mayor a 1 entre el último par comparado fue menor que 1 bien nos pide que evaluemos el límite en esta representación de la proporcionalidad de Cualquier par de números mucho más grandes, dado que la serie tiende desde 1 hasta infinito. Sustituyamos n por números muy grandes, por un par de números muy grandes. Vamos a verlo. Ok, let's try a large value of n, so n equals 10. So we're looking for the 11th term in the series divided by the 10th term. We want to find this ratio. Or the 11th term in the series is 11 squared, which is 121, over 3 to the 11th power. We're getting that from this formula right here. The 10th term of the series is 10 squared, which is 100, over 3 to the 10th power. We want the ratio between these two terms. When we divide by this fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is all equal to 121 over 3 to the 11th times 3 to the 10th over 100. And this 3 to the 10th cancels out 10 powers over 3 down here. This is equal to 121 over 3 times 100, which is 300. Let's use the calculator to see what this equals. 121 divided by 300 is about 0.4. Okay, so this fraction is about equal to 0 0.4. And if you use larger and larger values of n and plug them into this limit, you'll find that this approach is one third. Entonces la proporción entre pares de términos conforme n y términos más grandes tiende a un tercio de la proporción entre cada uno. ¿Por qué? 0.4 es aproximadamente un tercio de un entero. ¿Sí? 
es más que punto 3, un tercio sería punto 33, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, o sea, tiende a punto 4. ¿Correcto? Entonces sería, es más, si le pongo 0.33333, me lo hace válido. No necesariamente es punto 4, o sea, es un tercio, que estrictamente sería, si dividimos 1 entre 3, nos da punto 33333. Si dimos 1 entre 2 tercios, sería punto 6666666. En este caso tiende a un tercio. Esto es aproximadamente igual a esto y por lo tanto es aproximadamente igual a esto. ¿Correcto? Great. Now let's see if we can prove what this limit is. The nth term in the series is n squared over 3 to the n. To find the n plus 1 term, we can replace all the n's with n plus 1. So the n plus 1 term in this series is n plus 1 squared over 3 to the n plus 1. Try evaluating this limit. Bien. Uh, evaluemos el límite de esa proporción. Cuando n tiende a infinito, o a un número muy grande. Hagamos la prueba cuál es nuestra línea podemos dar como 10 tal vez vamos a ver cómo lo probamos ok to find this limit let's first expand this n plus 1 squared numerator n plus 1 squared equals n squared plus 2n plus 1 so we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 And now we're dividing by a fraction, which is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's times 3 to the n squared. So we have a 3 to the n plus 1 down here and a 3 to the n up here. So this 3 to the n cancels out n powers of 3 down there. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 in the numerator. And as not here now, we have 3n squared. What's this limit equal to? Bien. Vamos a resolverlo. We found in the last hand that this limit is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 over 3n squared. So as n gets really, really big, the n squared terms dominate and these 2n and 1 terms don't matter. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 3n squared. And the n squares cancel. This is equal to the limit of one third. So this limit is equal to one third. Entonces hemos vuelto a demostrar lo que ya hemos visto hace un rato. O sea, lo podemos escribir otra vez con punto 4, con punto 33, o como un tercio. ¿Mm? Right. This limit is a third. So the ratio of successive or neighboring terms in this series approaches a third. And earlier we found that this series converges. It turns out that whenever the limit of this ratio is less than one, this series will converge. Well, actually that's not exactly true. Ratios between terms can be negative as well, in which case the terms in the series keep switching off between positive and negative values. So for a series to converge, this ratio should also be greater than minus one. Bien, ¿de qué otra manera se podría escribir esta desigualdad? Como el límite, bueno, el valor absoluto, absoluto del límite de A sub n más 1 entre A sub n cuando n tiene el límite menor que 1 o el valor absoluto del límite de a sub n más 1 entre a sub n cuando n tiene infinito o como el valor absoluto del de límite de a sub n más 1 entre a sub n eh, cuando n tiene infinito igual a 1 ¿cuál de estas tres es equivalente a esta desigualdad?
va la tercera ¿cuál entonces? la primera bueno es menor esto es menor que esto pero lo está viendo como valor absoluto si la secuencia de la desigualdad estuviera al revés sería esta si fuera una igualdad sería esta Exactly. So another way to write this whole expression is to say that the absolute value of this limit is less than one. So if this inequality is true, the series will converge. If the absolute value of this limit is greater than one, the series will always diverge. And finally, if this ratio equals one or minus one exactly, which happens more often than you might like, you can't determine whether the series converges or diverges. You'll have to use another convergence test. These rules are known as the ratio test because they involve the ratio of successive terms in the series. In this tutorial, we didn't prove why the ratio test works. If you've got the time, you can think more about why this test works. It turns out that performing the ratio test is the same thing as performing a comparison test to a geometric series. But if you're more interested in learning the rules of the ratio test, then here they are. O para hablar de proporción usamos la, re, la relación o proporción entre un par de términos de la serie que queremos definir si es convergente o divergente. ¿Sí? Si nos da que la proporción es menor que 1, será convergente. Si la proporción entre pares de términos es mayor que 1, será divergente. Si la proporción es igual a 1, esta prueba no sirve. Bien, y vamos finalmente el día de hoy a ver las series alternantes. Here we'll look at series that are alternating. An alternating sequence or series is one that switches between positive and negative terms, like this one here. 13 is positive, then minus 5 is negative, 2 is positive, minus 1 is negative, 4 is positive, and the next term here would be negative. Which of the following series is an example of an alternating series? Bien, esta es una serie alternante. Se refiere a el primer término es un número positivo, el segundo es negativo, el tercero es positivo, el segundo es negativo, el siguiente es positivo. Entonces es una serie alternante. Y este estaría por arriba del cero, está por debajo del cero, para arriba del cero, para arriba del cero. Estaría unida. Bueno, esa secuencia no es una serie, es una secuencia. Es una lista de números. Tenemos las comas en medio. Es una lista. Esta sería una secuencia entonces alternante. La tercera. Sí. Tendríamos que poner aquí más 1, menos 2, más 3, menos 4, más 5, menos 6. Next, we'll try to figure out when alternating series converge. But first, here's a series that's not alternating. Every term is positive. It's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 2n minus 1. So that's 4 plus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths plus 4 sevenths plus 4 ninths, and so on. All the numerators are 4, and the denominators are all the odd numbers. Does this series converge or diverge? Yeah. Uh, yeah. La sumatoria es de n igual a 1 infinito de 4 entre 2 n menos 1. ¿Qué se resuelve así? 4 entre 1 más 4 entre 3 más 4 entre 5 más 4 entre 7 más 4 entre 1 más hasta infinito. ¿Esa serie es convergente o divergente? ¿Divergente? Sí. Porque este sería 4 más estos se están agregando números a 4 pero nos va a dar una suma de un número como es infinita sería un número no definido no un número específico vamos a decir un número aquí entonces es divertido right. this series here diverges one way to show that is to use the comparison test with the harmonic series shown here 
Each term in the harmonic series is smaller than its corresponding term in this series up here. So because the harmonic series diverges, this series diverges as well. And we can write that the sum of this series is infinity. Let's plot the partial sums on the number line. The first term is 4. And then we're adding 4 thirds to that. And then 4 fifths. Then 4 sevenths. And then 4 ninths. The individual terms are getting smaller and smaller. But as you add up infinitely many terms, this sum diverges to infinity. But now let's return to alternating series. Let's make this series alternating by putting a minus sign in front of every other term. Now, does this series converge or diverge? Let's plot the partial sums on the number line again. Again, the first term is 4. Next, we're subtracting 4 thirds from that. So we move back to here. Then we're adding 4 fifths, and then subtracting 4 sevenths, and next we add 4 ninths. If we keep adding and subtracting more terms, this series will converge to a point right around here. It turns out that this series converges to the number 3.14159, etc. Does this number look familiar? Yes, this alternating series here converges to pi. As a general rule, every alternating series converges if its individual terms approach zero. Another way to say that the terms are approaching zero is to say that the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth term in the series is zero. Take a look at this alternating series that converged up here, where the magnitude of the nth term is 4 over 2n minus 1. This limit goes to zero, and so this series up here definitely converges. Y con esto terminamos las series, las pruebas de series. Vamos a ver el próximo lunes diferencias secuenciales. Las diferencias en secuencias. ¿Okay? Por hoy fue todo.